Ravioli, ravioli, don't f with this dragon lowly. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, bringing you a spotlight for the only Lancer you'll ever need, whether you like it or not. Melusine. We'll be examining her stats and skills as well as going over pointers that utilize her effectively and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to soar through the sky on your waifu's back then hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so you can catch all these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. And now on the Melusine stats. Melusine has a max HP of 14,114 and a max attack of 12,273, which becomes 12,886 due to her Lancer class modifier. Melusine's HP is actually quite low for a Lancer, believe it or not, but she does boast the third highest attack stat in her class. Her HP stat is much more respectable when compared to the rest of the SSR servants, and in spite of her good HP, she still maintains a really strong attack stat. When it comes to her command cards, Melusine has 4 hits on her quick card, 3 hits on her arts, 3 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.65% and a star rate of 12%. Her base NP gain is very strong, while her star generating is about average, mostly due to her lack of quick cards. Overall, Melusine has incredibly well balanced stats with no weaknesses, and she has high attack, making her a solid all around attacker very similar to Artoria. Taking a look at her skills, Melusine's first skill is Dragonheart Rank B. This skill increases her own attack for 3 turns between 20 and 40%. It also increases her own max HP for 3 turns between 1000 and 2000 and charges her NP gauge between 20 and 30, all depending on level. It will also reduce her damage taken by 500 for 3 turns. Her next skill is Parry Dancer Rank B. This skill increases her crit star absorption rate for 3 turns between 2500% and 5000% and generates between 5 5 to 10 crit stars every turn and 5 to 10 crit stars immediately, all effects depending on level. And finally, her last skill is Ray Horizon Rank A, and this skill is split into two parts. When she uses this skill in Ascensions 1 or 2, Melusine will gain between 50 and 100% NP charge depending on level and switch to Ascension 3. She also gets one turn of invincibility. When using this skill in her third Ascension, though, instead of NP charge, Melusine will get between 20 and 30% NP damage for three turns depending on on level. For her passives, Melusine has Magic Resistance rank B, which increases her debuff resist by 17.5%, and Territory Creation rank B+, which increases her arts card effectiveness by 9%. As for her deck and Noble Phantasm, Melusine has an Arts Buster deck with Quick, Arts, Arts, Buster, Buster, and both an Arts and Buster Noble Phantasm. In Ascensions 1 and 2, Melusine's Noble Phantasm is Innocence Erendite. It's a single target arts attack that deals damage to one enemy, with a modifier between 950 1500% depending on level. It also generates 10 crit stars and increases the damage taken by the enemy by 1000 for 5 turns. It will also increase her NP gain rate for 3 turns between 20 and 40% depending on overcharge. However, in her third ascension form, Melusine's Noble Phantasm switches to Hollow Heart Albion. This is an AoE buster attack with a damage modifier between 300 and 500% depending on level. It also grants Melusine Invincibility Pierce and inflicts burn to all enemies, damaging them by 1000 for 5 turns. It will also increase her buster card effectiveness for 3 turns between 20 and 60% depending on overcharge. Unfortunately, Melusine's ascension mat requirements are very resource hungry. For level ascension, she needs 15 knight medals, 24 fangs, 9 reactors, and 5 dragon scale. Knight medals drop at the royal castle in Camelot with a 39% drop rate, fangs have a 55% drop rate at the Isle of Wyverns in Okeanos, reactor cores are best farmed at the West Intercellar City in Olympus where they have a 22% percent drop rate and dragon scales have a 13 percent drop rate at nipper in babylonia for skill leveling melusine is going to need 36 fangs 30 metals 24 aurora steel and a whopping 72 tiny bells per skill aurora steel can be farmed at the castle of ice and snow in lost belt 2 where it has a 47 percent drop rate and tiny bells are a new lost belt 6 mat that will eventually be farmable at the foggy coast with a 72 percent drop rate yes you heard that right melusine is indeed the first ever servant to have two completely unique NPs. Big things really do come in small, cute packages. But the double NP isn't the only impressive thing that Melusine is packing. Her stats alone put her leagues above most other servants. Possessing both fairly good HP and star generating, as well as excellent attack and NP gain, Melusine doesn't really suffer in any major area. Even her passives are commendable, with a high ranking territory creation, which gives her a substantial passive boost to her single target NP damage. But stats are just the tip of the iceberg. What really really sets Melusine apart from the other Lancers in the game is her signature skill, Ray Horizon. This skill actually has two effects depending on which ascension
Ascension you're using. In Ascensions 1 and 2, it grants Melusine invincibility and charges her NP gauge by 100%. It also automatically forces her into her third Ascension form. If she uses the skill while in Ascension 3, she still gains invincibility, but instead of NP charge, she gets a 3 turn NP damage buff. Now if you played this game for longer than 10 minutes, I don't think I need to explain to you how bonkers broken a 100% NP charge is, especially on an AoE servant. This is basically an instant wave clear button for Melusine and single handedly enables all kinds of farming teams. But even the secondary effect of increasing NP damage is quite powerful. 30% is a sizable buff and it lasts for 3 turns, which means it's perfect for 3 turn farming. Now the only thing crazier than having a skill that buffs damage and charges NP in your kit is having 2. Enter Dragonheart, Melusine's initial skill that gives her a massive 3 turn 40% attack steroid along with a 30% charge to her NP gauge. It also increases her max HP and reduces her damage taken. 30% NP charge may not seem like a lot compared to that 100%, but trust me, it is. This not only further fuels Lolilot's looping, but also enables her to charge her Noble Phantasm gauge without switching NPs, so she has a safe way of looping as a single target art servant. The attack buff is obviously significant as well, both for farming and in single target damage. And defensively, this skill gives Melusine some decent survivability in challenge quests, especially when combined with the short cooldown and invincibility from Ray Horizon. And finally, Melusine has yet another piece of offensive augmentation in Parry Dancer. This is her de facto crit synergy skill, which every DPS nowadays seems to come pre-packaged with, except unlike most, this one is pretty good. Much like Morgan's crit skill, this one skill serves as a crit engine all on its own. The massive star generating and star absorb buffs give Melusine all the consistency that she needs to be a crit DPS machine. All that's missing is the boost to her crit damage. For skill priority, naturally you should level Ray Horizon first for that 100% NP battery, followed by Dragonheart for more battery and buffs, and then her crit skill last. Mana loading and extra card damage are both a pen skills worth picking up for Melusine, since she'll be doing a lot of farming and challenge quests. As mentioned, Melusine has two Noble Phantasms. While in Ascensions 1 and 2, her Noble Phantasm is a single target arts attack that generates crit stars, increases her NP gain, and increases damage taken by enemies by a small amount. When Melusine assumes her final form, her NP becomes an AoE buster attack that ignores invincibility, burns enemies, and increases her buster card effectiveness. Melusine has two very distinct playstyles, and those are very much illustrated through her NPs. As an art servant when using Ascensions 1 and 2, she is a single target attacker who relies on crits and NP spam to dish out tons of damage. In this regard, she plays very much like an SSR version of Kagetora. Her NP is highly loopable due to her incredibly high NP gain, high hit counts, and NP gain buffs. And since her second skill is a 2030 on steroids, it enables her to crit consistently, which further bolsters her NP gaining capability. In this form, Melusine is an NP looping machine and is best suited as a main DPS for boss fights and challenge quests. As a buster servant in Ascension 3, Melusine is more suited to farming. Not only does she have an AoE NP, but that 100% charge makes her very easy to use in meta buster farming teams with Vich and Oberon. Plus, her ability to pierce invincibility gives her very good utility. She also has a plethora of 3 turn buffs, including a buster buff on her NP, and all of her buffs are multiplicative. So not only does her damage not fall off in later waves, it actually gets stronger as the buff from her NP stat. That means that as a farmer, Melusine's damage is usually at its highest in wave 3, which is ideal and it makes her NP damage comparable to the likes of Arresh and Karna despite her lack of an NP interlude. I know I often call some servants flexible and capable of filling multiple roles, but nowhere has that been more true than with Melusine. She can quite literally fill any DPS role, and not only fill it, but excel at it. Melusine is not just a mediocre buster farmer, she's an elite buster farmer that's arguably the best in her class. Melusine isn't just a passable single target DPS, she's one of the best art servants in her class with immense utility, survivability, and damage potential for tackling almost any boss. Being both buster and arts also gives her access to some of the best meta supports in the game, which makes her a top tier unit not only for newer players, but end game players as well. All of this does come at a big drawback though, and that's the restrictive nature of her third skill. Knowing when and how to activate Melusine's Ray Horizon, 
poison is the key to using her properly, since once she's using that skill, she will be locked into her AoE buster form. This makes farming those extra difficult nodes with her especially tricky. Similarly, in challenge quests, knowing when to stay single target and get off high damage versus going AoE for that invincibility pierce is very crucial. The skill ceiling on Melusine is high and she can be awkward and hard to use, especially for newer players. While endgame players will often just find it quicker and more consistent to just use Morgan in buster farming teams rather than mess around with Melusine's skills and her lower damage output. But by far Melusine's best characteristic is her flexibility. She can fit in with a wide variety of team comps and make good use of both buster and art supports depending on how you want to build her. When using her for farming, it's best to pair her with NP charging buster support like Vich and Shakespeare, while in boss fights, arch crit supports like Landling and Mozart are more useful. Vich teams are the key to turning Melusine into an elite three turn farmer, but Melusine is still capable of getting off at least two back to back NPs with Shakespeare thanks to his NP charging skill, and she can also benefit from his buster buff. Mozart and Landling, meanwhile, are capable of providing both crit stars and NP gain buffs to Melusine to assist her with her single target burst damage. Melusine's Bond CE is Aurora. It increases the party's buster and arch card effectiveness by 10%. Mel is in the support, so this isn't really worth using. Instead, if you're focusing on farming, go with CEs that give starting NP charge or high NP damage like K-Scope and Black Grail, and for single target damage, use arch buffing CEs that also buff crit damage like Another Ending or the recent Blossoming Under the Crimson Sky. In the future, I actually recommend the newest CE in JP, Song of the Cradle, because it's universally good on Melusine as it provides both starting NP charge as well as buster damage for farming and NP gain for her single target Noble Phantasm. For command codes, giving Melusine any crit buffing code like Heavenly Child of Karama goes a long way since crit damage is just about the only thing that she's lacking in her kit. Overall, Melusine is an excellent servant and I'd argue one of the most versatile DPS units that we've ever seen in FGO. She excels as a farmer in the new Buster meta, being fully capable of looping even in more free to play friendly teams due to her 100% NP charge skill, and she can even fill the role of a challenge quest DPS due to her strong utility and loopable arts noble phantasm. Her damage and consistency may not be on par with the most broken servants, but that's the price you pay for flexibility. So Melusine earns an S in my book. As far as non extra non berserker class servants go, Melusine may just be the best of them, and her ability to play any role just makes her even more valuable for anyone who's lacking coverage across multiple team comps. And those are my thoughts on Melusine. The good news is that much like Morgan, she also has an abnormally large number of rate ups, so you don't need to roll for her right away at release if you're trying to save up. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, all linked in the description down below. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight, so Brony out, later.